was a pretty wild game. It was a real clinic by DA Obsidian absolutely spanking that game. I mean, Jesus Christ, they definitely showed him who's boss right off the bat. I think we have the stats as well to show really how crazy the game was as far as DA Obsidian goes. Oh, yeah. um, we'll see some damage. You know, we'll see some gold. I think we have that available. Um, yeah, we're just getting us up. Here we go. Here they are. Um, so, wow. Okay, yeah. So, right off the bat, you see Killian with 44.1 thousand damage. Nearly double oh. everyone on the side of UMass. Second highest is that. Killian alone is <laughs> doing wow. just a bit under two of the members of UMass's team in damage. I mean, that guy was essentially a sixth player. Holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. that guy did some serious work. 17, 2, and 15. Doesn't play around. You see the huge gold lead between him and that. Um, Look at Frymaster's gold. That poor Hecarim matching the gold of the support on oh, uh, DA Obsidian. That is that is really not what you're looking for as a carry jungler. Yeah, that's not that's not ideal. Same damage. The gold a little bit higher, but he does match the Malphite's gold. Yeah. Um, yikes. Yeah, not I not ideal for them. Um, yeah, bada bing, you know, that's game one. We see some crazy shit from DA Obsidian there. Let's see if they can do it again. We're going to go right to pick ban. Here we are. And so let's we'll see what they Once choose. Again. I mean, UMass on blue side, which is advantageous. Banning the Ori right out the gate. Smart choice. Oriana is broken this patch. I mean, the last few patches, she's broken with a capital B. She's spicy. That's a, you know, oh, yeah. I like her. Um, Maokai also gone. Fiddlesticks gone. Pike yeah. gone. Thresh Thresh is an interesting so ban. Be it must be, uh, I would imagine it's a um, a ban for the player rather than the meta. Right. Same with the A-Soul, right? So oh, of He's course. pretty cool still, but there's got to be someone who's playing that guy. Um, kind of similar bans. I want to say four out of six, maybe five okay. out of six are the same as last game. UMass is um, running the Graves back. Okay, look, if you guys think you can do it, you know. Uh, we see the J4 and Swain locked in right away. Hey, yeah. it worked the first time. Uh, why the hell not try it again? If it ain't broke. All right, but they want to take... It looks like UMass wants to poach the Nautilus this game. And I do like that a lot. You really can't give Swain a hard engage champion. Nautilus is so strong this patch. Mordecai's her top. I like that better than a uh, than a top laner who's weak side if you're going to have a Graves in your team. who's going to be a laner Graves. They could be flexing Graves jungle, though would be pretty saucy oh get the orn out of here great <laughs> jungle would be cool but i mean yeah get the orn away please i mean as soon as i see this guy hovered even i'm i'm, I'm tired dude i'm tired come on i feel it's, that. Al it's almost every game this guy's here we see another briar ban yone ban again yone i don't know what the, i don't know what the fuck you say anime right i love it actually yeah not ironically anime pretty cool haven't been watching it so much but listen mad respect there's some crazy shit right now ash, ash band that's a bit surprising I'm the not frost sure. queen yeah i mean their comp isn't really that great with ash uh, maybe they're scared of an ash support running ash caitlin she's a strong little lady you know perma slow almost um wants to try something trist is gone as well after that you know, after that performance against the Grays, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, my man mid lane's got PTSD. Putting in the Renata Glass, I think that's an excellent pick because mm. you have a Graves, a Mordekaiser, and a Nautilus. These champions all want to run into you. Renata Glass wants you to run into her. Very true. Oh, lock it in. Lock it in. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it. I cannot believe that Draven has been locked in. What a blessing. Holy shit. When's the last time I saw Draven play? Uh... I don't know. Oh, Ooh, give me the Zach. Zach. So Dude. I'm liking UMass's comp way better this time. If the Mordecai through can pull out the Swain and say, nope, you're not fighting this team fight, and leave the rest of Obsidian to their devices, and the Zach is just going to wombo combo with his Graves ulti and his Draven ulti, that, if executed properly, is a lot of damage. I love it. Um, Oh, wait. So that guy actually locked in Yasuo. Okay. So I guess that makes sense with the Jarvan, the Orn, even the Swain yeah. E when he pulls, I believe, is considered a knockup. Does yeah. Renata Glass have a knockup? She doesn't, right? She, she does have a pull. Oh, okay, so that, yeah. that will count for sure. So kind of cool comps on both sides here. Um, The Draven alone, I'm very excited to see. I have not seen a Draven in so long. He's very entertaining to watch. 
a super high risk ADC, of course. Um, always wanting that gold, a gold hungry man, a little goblin. And so um, I love to see it. This matchup will be better for Graves, but it's still not going to be easy. I mean, it's a Yasuo with a wind wall, and he, I mean, if at best it'll be a farm fast mid, at worst it'll be Yasuo wind walling Graves Q and just demolishing him. Right, he's going to have to do something um, a little special, maybe better than last game. Considering it is the same player, he already kind of knows how this guy plays Graves if he was looking. Mm. And we see DA Obsidian already on the move. These guys like to do something spicy in the early game. I like that. And you can tell DA Obsidian definitely has their coach doing work, giving them strats. Mm. Yeah, now is a runaway. They spotted them, though. So UMass can react. They know they're all here. Monolith is very scared. He's running away. They're going to ward the red buff here. Obsidian making sure they know what's going on. Two wards early game. They know exactly. They want to know exactly mm -hmm. where the Zach is pathing, which makes sense. That guy's, I mean, that guy's ganks, I want to say are almost unmatched. I mean, you can, yeah. you can E from the right side of that, like, blue, um, that blue side bottom brush wall there. That piece, you can E from all the way, like, in the river almost and reach the lane and hit someone. It's crazy. Uh, insane range from him. So really cool ganks. Makes sense to want to get that vision down early. See what they end up doing here. I feel like Zach wants to camp bot lane. I mean, <laughs> you want to get that Draven some gold. If that guy can get some gold, he's going to be having a good time. Matt, you know, Draven loves it. Draven loves it. Um, give him all the stacks. You know, catch the axe. Make sure you catch him. Gray's already having a tough time. That's all right. Graves Matt. really want to push this wave. Maybe go for a shove and back on the uh, on the cannon wave. Get an early gold advantage and try to survive the early game. Because if you survive that, Graves will just scale naturally. Just don't get into early game 1v1s with Yasuo and you should be good. Very true. And as long as Yasuo does not cancel those autos continuously. Oh, my God. <laughs> so level two right away on the Draven and the Nautilus. A Ooh. bunch of axes, which is just insane. That's what's so crazy about this champion. Level one, he's adding a bunch of AD, just huge supplemental AD built into his kit from the axes. And that was beautiful. Oh Draven in Nautilus really pressuring, saying, hey, we've got the way stronger 2v2 early game. We're going to utilize it. They definitely should be looking for things like that the whole lane. They could probably even 2v3 if that Draven can manage to interrupt the flag and drag. That would be nuts. Um... I just love Draven and his play potential. I cannot believe he's in the game. I'm very excited to see what this guy can do. Um, no skin, so I'm not too sure how often this person plays it, but, you know, we'll see what happens regardless. Even just catching the axe is like a little mini game when you play this guy. For sure. And right now, they all up to CS. Not, not much, but we'll see how far he can get this uh, minion lead ahead, pressuring bot lane. Especially because Swain is not very great at... Uh, Oh, boy. I think this guy's dead. I mean, he tried. Okay, that's a good tornado. You know, I don't even think he needed to flash exactly. Everyone burned everything already. Um, a good... Oh, God. Uh -oh. Burn is getting real hurt. I think Mordekaiser thinks he has a lot of damage, but I don't think it's enough to contest with that tanky, tanky Ram Lord right now. He might need some items first. Um, that was a very nice dodge on the Zaki from the Yasuo, just dodging to a minion there. That's pretty For cool. Sure. And um, Graves is really out farming this Yasuo early, which is to be expected, but still, I mean, that's exactly what you need as opposed to last game. Oh boy, okay, so yeah, that swing is getting hurt from the axes, but we also see Yasuo and Graves here. Yasuo's gonna die to the Ignite, I believe, okay, and then the J4 is still taking some damage. Very similar HP between him and oh, J4. Oh, wow. But a huge double roots but regardless we're not a glass goes down swain very very low and, and that is what happens early game because of draven a complete reversal from last game umass's carries are Ooh, now Zach wants it. Oh. now in the lead wow sorry about that zach was uh looking for the swain there i saw him in the bush he wanted to e in i saw him with a little slingshot getting now, ready draven should shove this lane and back there should be a cannon wave coming up it yeah, cannon wave should be the next one. So this would be a great time to back. Cannons are great to back on because the cannon wave tanks a turret for so long. It gives you a lot of time to come back without, without with ensuring your lane isn't going to be shoved in. 
Very true. And ensuring a good reset when you get back. Very, very nice. You see Yasuo starting to bust out some moves here. Good Not micro on Graves. Really good right. micro. <laughs> yeah. Ends up um, about even with the Yasuo. A little bit ahead there, but... Uh, and listen, I was not a believer in Nami's graves, but he's, he's proven me wrong. He's showing he can work this champion. Also rocking the best grave skin, formerly Mafia Graves. It's a, it is a very nice skin. Call it Crime City now. It's kind of lame. Yeah, it is, it's extremely lame. Mafia's way cool. For sure. And I don't know how many Italian people complained about that. I can guarantee it's I close to zero. We don't give a fuck, baby. <laughs> Embrace that shit. So Orin taking a lot of damage from the oh, oh from flash? the oh from the Mordekaiser's doing a lot. Wow, wow. So that's a very good and I want to say unexpected flash from the Orin to get out of that cube. Definitely would have died there. J4 and Renata Glass. Meanwhile, pick up the first dragon of the game. And you know that's okay because now he's running a Zac jungle, who's oh, definitely shit. a scaling jungler. Oh, he's done. wow. He's yeah. Okay. Oh, weird miss on the. On the knockoff from J4, but they're still going in regardless. Yasuo also missing his tornado, so these two are just gonna re retreat real quick, get out of there. Gray's still pretty low, but unfortunate miss from both of those abilities. I'm not sure how the J4 flag and drag missed. It may have been slightly out of range. It looked like it connected with the flag, but yeah, unfortunate for them. Luckily though, they do get out unscathed from the errors, so not too bad. Um I do want to praise the Swain for farming so well on the turret. It's a lot of pressure with a Draven lane, and he's not the best champion to farm on the turret with. Wow. And a bit antsy on that Ignite. If, if Yasuo didn't win well there, he was done, so that oh, guy was sure. dead. That Q was very close. We see J4 moving in now onto the Graves. So Graves, you're going to want... Yeah, okay. He, you know, he uh, had enough time to get out of there. Yeah. Can, you can only gank so far on the J4 with the flag and drag. Everyone kind of knows the range of that I think approximately. It was a smart move. You know, J4 isn't so strong at the moment. He knew Yasuo was low. He couldn't go in with him. And he didn't want to get soloed, which Graves certainly could do. Oh, he's he definitely could. And then we see... Oh, my God. Pardon me. Um... Nautilus with the Hex Flash going to go right onto the Swain, get him down to about half HP. Will you see J4 on his way up? Draven wants the Swain. He will not go down to the Ignite. One tick off of death there. J4 hovering in the bush, waiting to see if something else goes down before he engages. Looks like they might... Oh, Nautilus gets the hook on Renata Glass. J4 is now here. He wants to do something, but not the right time. J4... I'm sorry, Draven just hit six, ready with the spinning axes. Tries to grab the Swain. Ends up missing. Oh, my God. So, he almost got him. Forces the Swain to flash away. Incredible placement by the Draven. I was honestly not expecting oh, that. And there goes Yasuo. Wow. And, yep, the big jump from the Zack on the Yasuo. He's now dead. Draven goes down. We see Swain very, very low. J4 ults onto the Nautilus. But he flashes right out of there. Draven getting a little greedy there. That's not who you want to give gold over to. I mean, Well, granted, actually, Renata got that. So, thankful. But... At the same time, you do not want this Swain to catch up with farm. Right, definitely not. Um, geez, Speaking of farm, look at the close. 20 minion advantage mid lane. Graves is smurfing right now. 2-0, oh 74 CS. This is looking like a much better game for Nami. Absolutely. And I was told a very, very special thing. Oh, uh, well, let me let me interrupt that real quick. Nautilus is dead from that Swain E follow-up Jarvan flag and dragon. Now we see... Zach and Graves coming on up. It looks like they want to tower dive this Orn. I think it's very possible that, that they, they do, do it. it. Yep, so he's going to miss the E there. Will try to Q. It looks like Zach may go down with this passive. Graves flashes over, but they end up getting the kill. The Ram does interrupt that a little bit. And luckily for Zach, the turret does not. I'm sorry, the turret, they were. It was prioritizing the blobs. Initially, it switched, um, it switched aggro, but it looks like it may prioritize blobs after that. Um, he nearly died, but, you know, they get out unscathed there. Very yeah. nice. Good gank. Almost turned tragic, though. Almost traded a, a kill, but... The ram's scary. I mean, you yeah. don't stand in a line. That, that ram's going to butt you, dude. He's going to butt you. Oh, and my God. I saw God. what they were trying to do. They tried to cancel him, uh, just barely mistiming that so Orn couldn't hit the ram back. But all in all, good. It worked out. Yes, very nice. 
You see Draven picking up a quick plate. And this is a scary situation for Swain. He could be dove here and just barely mm. missing that Nautilus hook. I mean, two autos. 20% of your health is gone. Two autos. Just nasty. The guy doesn't even have an item. He has a hearthbound axe and a fucking dirk. This guy is going to go crazy down. Um, I've also heard a very interesting ancient secret from my good buddy Chase, who is here <laughs> sometimes. He says that Yasuo's power spike is at 09. So once we see Yasuo at 09, he will be much stronger. We see Swain going. They're getting dove right now. Swain alts still ma manages to pick up Nautilus. And with the Yasuo teleport, picks up Draven. Swain goes down by himself. A pretty decent... Um, I want to say a pretty decent counter to the dive there. A very clutch teleport from the Yasuo to clean it up. And listen, as the mid lane player myself, that is so tilting when you do such a great job mid and then the bot lane forgets <laughs> and does not respect the mid laner. Uh, he had TP up the whole time, just TPs and gets a free kill. It's very true. It's always unfortunate, especially in a matchup, like you said, where you're going off. Graves decides to 1v3, but Zach oh. is here. Ends up picking up the Renata Glass nearly. She's just dead. Yasuo gets the alt down on him. Grace takes no damage from Nautilus is now here. Gets the hook in. Zach doing a little bit of AoE damage. Got all three of them on top of him. No one else is doing damage. They are still running. Zach has no passive. Ends up dying. Graze goes down. J4 flashes away at very low HP. Nautilus also very low. Ha Yasuo needs to flash away to avoid the Draven. Windwall is the final. Oh my god. The final axe after Draven flashes towards him. The Windwalls from this guy are doing some work for him. Luckily for him, it is very, uh, I want to say generous with what it blocks um that shit could be on top of you literally making contact with your character model and you do the wind wall and it will block it regardless so we see draven still uh doing a little, something a little crazy here has to burn his cleanse real quick um wants to try to do something oh but everyone else is here zach needs to go in there right now he wants to pick up this dragon really really bad it looks like he's not going to make it but he does want to try i feel like that was a little bit too late zach has ult the Blast Cone was there. We need some damage to follow up, though. Nautilus is here. Manages to pick up the Jarvan. Draven pulled around. Swain is now also going to go down. Never mind. Wow. Heals a bunch and kills Draven easily. Now Zach goes down. And it looks like Nautilus also will go down. Wow. Goodness gracious. So now we see a repeat where Swain is 5-1-4. and four. That is unfortunate. Oh, God. With a 500 gold bounty, that guy has a lot of gold in his purse at the moment. He's going to farm up. Probably pull that next wave and maybe back. Um, the problem is UMass is just not respecting oh, how Swain is a oh, character that wants oh, to go into your face. <laughs> I mean, Graves just gets um, actually knocked up three times. The guy has triplets now. He is in bed for a couple of years, mm -hmm. I think. That is unfortunate. Maybe a coma after that one. Um, we see the Rift Herald coming through. Going to do something for the J4 and Yasuo mid lane. Meanwhile, Orn trying to do something to the Mordekaiser. Doing a little bit of damage, ends up losing the trade now under his tower. Might have to back. And just um, like that, all the lead on the side of UMass is now gone. Right, that, I mean, that's I guess that's all they really need was that Swain to do some work, a couple missteps, and yeah, now it's two dragons on DA Obsidian, and they're, they're five kills up. I mean, shit. And they're already back on that path where Swain is going to probably take control of the game. I mean, oh... This is what happens. You shouldn't have let him do it. Now he's doing it. Now I don't know if you can stop him. Though. It's dangerous. That guy's only going to keep going. For sure. And listen, you know, Draven is Draven. He will keep scaling. But the thing is, you really want that early game advantage because, again, he's Draven. They're choosing another composition that has to go into range of Swain and stay in his range. And Draven can't do that. He can't hang. He's going to get pulled out of his axes. By Jarvin, by Orn, by Yasuo Tornado, by Renata Alt, by a Swain Paul. It's it's really not going to be a great composition for Swain to uh, for uh, Draven to run into. Right, not ideal. Plenty of things to kind of lock him down, get him out of the fight. Um, honestly, even just standing here with three people <laughs> is a little bit risky. We see Nautilus coming on his way down. Oh my God, the J4 flag and drag interrupts the hook and this guy is dead. I'm not sure what that was. They knew three of them were there. I mean, 3v2, that wasn't going to work. Right, so. nothing really on top of them that they got. So, I mean. Yeah, I don't, that was a, <laughs> that was a desperation <laughs> hook if I've ever seen one. And right now, this is looking like a quick 2-0 and a handshake. And really, for UMass to get back into this game, they're going to have to play it slower. Their champions will scale. They will scale heavily, and they will have much stronger engage. 
And frankly, Renata is a good counter engage, so is Orn. So I'm not sure what they can do to scale into this game. Man. We're really a game that really needed to bank off advantages early. For sure. Oh, we see the Swain and Renata Glass just doing some damage to the Draven. Graves is going to get ulted by the Yasuo, but Zack is here to come back and help him out. He also goes down to the Graves all J4 now here all by himself. Might be able to get out if he has another flag and drag. Does not manage, and that is a double kill for Graves. So that guy's getting a little bit even more ahead despite Yasuo catching up a little bit too fast. 3 and 5 now with his roams and team fight contributions. Morakai's are going to try to do something here. It looks like he just flashed um, right in front of him. He's doing some damage. Orn, Orn is also doing some damage. Huge shield on this guy. Oh, yeah, I think Orn bad. is dead. Yeah, so uh, you know he'll chip away. He'll keep chipping on this, on this Ram Lord, and now he is dead. He might be able to get this tower real quick if no one rotates up. That would be some nice gold for him. Oh my goodness, um, Renata Glask is dead. Uh, she kind of gets caught out real quick. We see Swain here in the 1v3. It's very possible he does it with the J4 now. Oh, but this Flag fight... and dragging into the alt, and now Swain is on two of them. Chases the Nautilus. Should be able to get him with a quick Q. Yup, there he goes. So, I mean, the thing with the Swain, when he's this far ahead, even if he's 1v3, when that alt is down, you do not want to be near him. <laughs> and they, they throw the Zack right over to the J4, and I think they will give Swain this kill which i can't really blame him oh they'll give him the j4 you know he needs some gold too um yeah that's Bada a bang. problem if they had kept that swain tamp down bot lane they could have just saved the uh mordekaiser alt for yasuo and that would have really turned the team fights later in the game but now they have a second damage threat with swain so you can only alt one person as mordekaiser yeah i feel like he might even die if he if he ults the swain to be honest yeah he that. is so big um, they're trying to do something here. Not us with the ult on the Swain, but the wind wall is going to block a lot of Draven's axes just right off the bat. Wants to attack the Swain a little bit. Does some damage. We see Mordekaiser are now in there going really, really low. And now Orn's here. I think Mord yeah, Mord, Mord can live. Nope. Oh, there he goes. That's Mord and Nautilus dead after the big follow-up. Plus, it looks like Zack might go down very close there. A uh, quick snipe with the ram doesn't manage to get it, but that's Yasuo and J4 down now. A quick turnaround from UMass, and they're chasing this. Yeah, um, they did not, not focus farther. the Draven. Good game on a absolutely awesome flank on on uh, Graves, taking all the aggro. But again, later in the game, these five v fives. I'm not sure how it's going to go. It's looking good now, but how good is it going to look? This is why Swain gets his ult and. He oh, just walks man. into you and kills you. Yeah, I feel like Draven probably could have threw another couple axes there and gotten him, gotten him down. Um, <laughs> gotten that Swain down real quick. You know, a nice bounty for him, 700 gold. Could have grabbed it, but not anymore. Um, now we see him dying to Orn while the dragon is being fought. So we see Renata Glass taking some more damage, and now Zach gets a double knock up on his E. Mord is here now, and the J4 ult's in there. All everyone's trapped in the arena. Two of them go down, that's J4 and Renata Glask, and then Swain is now being pulled into it. He's not having ult, and he goes down as well. And that is the shutdown for the Mordekaiser, which honestly is pretty strong if it can't go to the Draven. That's a good, you know, great guy for uh, the gold to go over to, and that that dragon is gone now. Yep, wow. Definitely a much closer game for UMass this time, and Obsidian really wants to look for these 5v5 front-to-back team fights given their comp, so they should really look to stop these skirmishes and play a more controlled game. I think they need to. Um, we saw what Swain can really do, um, even in a 1v3 situation. But in something like that, you don't have your alt. You're not equipped for this fight. Uh, you know, I can understand the dragon's the dragon, right? You always want to contest it, but it's sometimes you just kind of can't. Um, not ideal there. We see Orn and Renata Glass covering around this Rift Herald. A little bit risky from them. Um, <laughs> Luckily, the Orn dodged that little anchor hook, and they will pick up the rift here. See where they're where they're gonna drop it? Maybe mid lane. Yeah, I can imagine they're gonna want to drop that uh, herald. I would say top lane would be good, and especially because Baron's gonna be the next really big objective coming through, especially for UMass's side. They're going to have a really strong split push with the Mordekaiser, so it would make sense if they want to drop the Herald top, open the map up topside, and look to get a Baron play going in the next 10 minutes or so. Absolutely. Um, 
You definitely can't do it within the next few minutes. I mean, that would be way too risky. To get a good team fight, they definitely could. They could try it out. I want to try to get the read here on what, what these guys are thinking at the moment. So, And right now they're awarding Baron side. They're certainly not going to start it. That would just be really int with their team all clumped up in the pit. They don't have the best team to clump up in the Baron pit in turn. You don't Especially not against Zach. Zach. Yeah, you don't want that guy in <laughs> handy yeah. with everything. Pretty dangerous there. Um, Gray's grabbing some farm up top. Renata Glass and Swain up there real quick. Draven and Nautilus in the mid lane. Jarvan might be coming over. I think he wants to grab this Graves with them. We'll see if Graves stays and recognizes it. It does not look like he recognizes it. We see him getting collapsed upon. Uses his dash. Dodges the flag and drag, but now he has to... Wow, so he wow. gets out with the alt. There you go. That's all he really needs to do. Avoids the 1v3. Look at him styling on these guys. He's baiting them a little bit. The Rift Herald goes down mid. Yeah, and there we go. Breaking ankles. Drop the Rift. No one's here to defend it. Graves is oh, still no. keeping too busy. Oh, maybe a little bit too much, my friend. I guess a little bit of a distraction for the mid lane. Uh, but that Rift is now dead. They do get the tower, UMass. Um, but... In yeah. Although, yeah, they got the turret, but, you know, DA Obsidian really could. Oh, they didn't even get the turret, but a sliver. Oh, my hell. God, look wow, at that. Wow, that thing. was <laughs> one HP. Jesus. Still, they could pressure Baron from DA Obsidian's side. I'm not sure why they wouldn't rush for the Baron now that Graves is dead, but. I mean, they at least get to keep the turret. It's going to die fairly soon anyway. It's one auto attack away from death. Minions might secure that one for them. If they leave it on, you know, if they leave it unattended, we'll see what happens with that. Baron is up. We do see the dragon up in a minute 30. Swing going to grab some damage on this top tower. And now I think he can grab it. I think he can get it down here. Oh, you can we'll see Nautilus coming up, though. Get that top turret. And, yeah, Swain is in a bit of trouble right now. He's got no friends on the map near him. Problem is, does oh, he oh double my TP. God. Oh, my God. Thing is, I don't even know if he really needs that. Nautilus is going to uh, almost certainly go down here. And there he goes. I mean, I don't think a double TP was necessary. I think Yasuo could have done the job. There's support. You know, it wasn't sure. another carry. But, I mean, it would make sense if they go for the Baron, but they're not. So, that honestly, I think kind of goes in the favor of UMass if they can leverage that TP. Yeah, we see swinging a little bit off here from the Zach. Him and Zach are going to be by themselves. But Zach is um, tanky. No one's on this Draven. Who can get on this Draven? Yasuo is nowhere to be found. There he is coming finally. Sad. Swain could have been killed there. For real, that'd be a nice little bounty. A little bounty there. And I do agree with this Baron play, actually, because Mordecai is going to split. Mord is so strong their carry is low and he's gonna have to walk back he's got no teleport on the swain and no teleports at all on the side of obsidian no one can really contest this this is really dangerous for them right we see swain making his way over j4 goes right in and alts the draven draven gets out with a flash but we see a double knockup from the orn e plus the yasuo alt a lot of damage going down zach manages to live mordecai is now in the middle of everything trying his best to get some damage onto everyone graves now in the back line Yasuo manages to kill him, get him down. Now the follow-up is coming in from D Obsidian, and that is Draven, Yasuo, and Nautilus all dead. And that's no bueno. Oh, boy. That is that is a Baron over to them. And that was well played, good idea, poorly executed, yeah. unfortunately, for UMass. I think this Mordecai's went a little too heavy, a little too deep, and didn't pull back the peel. Unfortunate. And I think that is really going to seal the deal for the game. It's going to be so hard to come back from this. So much gold and so much push power. Mordekaiser can't split the way he's going to want to. It's going to be a third Drake on Soul Point. Yeah, he he kind of wanted, it looks like Mord wanted to solo the dragon there, did not have the time. And now, yeah, we see DA Obsidian coming over. They're going to grab it. And like you said, Soul Point is up next. We'll see what soul they end up getting here. This is another ocean, so that will be Ocean Soul in roughly five minutes. We'll see if the game lasts that long. I feel like we're going to see something a little crazy within those next five minutes, considering how the game has gone this far. I mean, you got 43 kills on the board. Very, very small gold lead on DA Obsidian, 1.7K. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, there's nothing too nuts as far as gaps are going. The only slight gap in, is CS between Graves and Yasuo, but that doesn't matter too much anymore. 25 minutes. Mm. Um... Yeah, we'll see what they end up doing here. Maybe some pushes. Rift Herald, no one has anymore, so they're gonna have to figure out what they do in this little lull here. No objectives up. Maybe some uh, group sieging, something like that. We do see that Da Obsidian has the Baron. Nautilus getting a little bit of damage down. Maybe a mistake though. Um, Nautilus getting caught out. They're not gonna be in a position to fight this. Right. I don't know about that. I mean, everyone loves landing a hook, but that was not the time nor the place. I want to say. Um, he's now dead, and it looks like, yeah, Dave is going to push this mid-tower if they're able. I think they should be fine to do it. Zach wants something, though. He's going to try his best, get a little bit of CC onto him. Um, Draven has been dove, and it's done. He is gone after the J4 dives onto him, and that is the whole wow. defense um, has you been see, decimated. They're Mordecai's gone. are trying to split push way too late in the game. I mean, they have Baron buff. You can't split push against this team. And I don't, I mean, I don't blame him. What else can he do? He's playing Mordekaiser. He's just doing what his champion's built for. But at the same time, it's too little too late. That fight was so huge. They really needed that Baron. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I mean, they needed that. Especially, they, they really, if anything, they just wanted DA Obsidian to not have it. Um, because as we can see, they are going in here. That's two in him down. Yeah, and now this is it. The, the Nexus turns. Nautilus is going to die. Um, Renata Glass goes down. Nothing too crazy. Draven ends up dying as well. A little bit of damage onto the Orn. He might make it out. Looks like that. Oh, no. Q is big. Um, so he goes down. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. He's trying to do something. Yasuo is doing some work onto the Zac. And that's going to be the end of the game. Next. I mean, that's the quarterfinals. GG's 2 O's. Obsidian. Holy shit. And that was a real shame. It was a much better draft from UMass. The execution was just not there. Barely early game was in their hands and they threw the lead. Wow. I mean, they did throw the lead. And I think this is a game where we saw DA Obsidian waver just a little bit, a little bit there in the mid game. Um, they ended up, you know, uh, pulling it back though. Um, you know, they grabbed that, they grabbed that Baron and they come out with the 2-0. So uh, somewhat akin to the first game um, like I said a little bit of a waiver but they come out on top and that's the best of three for them DA Obsidian they will move on to the semis I believe that's against yep. vegan chickens which is going to be I mean that's something that's number one seed um, so we'll see what happens we're going to see if we can get an interview real quick with the winning team DA Obsidian hopefully someone wants to talk to us uh, absolutely I mean, Vegan Chickens is going to be a really tough opponent for them to go up against. They are a league up against UMass. So let's see if they can handle an opponent a cut above who they played today. But if today's games are any sort of indication, I'd say they're looking pretty good. They had way solid drafts. They had a solid game plan ever since level one. This team knew what they wanted to do. They knew their win cons, and they executed on them. Yep. Even when they had a losing bot lane, they executed on their win conditions. Yeah, and they made sure that those conditions uh, took them all the way to the end. They they ended up doing exactly what they needed to do. And I I guess we see exactly what happens um, when they, they do have things go their way, uh, regardless of the setbacks. And I believe we do have the stats for the game in just a moment here. Uh, we get to see... Uh, probably more even oh no a more even numerical comparison here between the teams compared to last game you won't see a 44,000 damage Swain uh, you know doubling <laughs> the damage on another team um, so or one you know the, the highest damage on the other team not doubling that anymore so um, yeah, we'll have those stats in just a moment, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the quarterfinals. So D Obsidian wins it. Uh, let's see how they were doing. This is incorrect. I'm just kidding. As you can see, this is from the last game with that 44k. But here is the right one. Here is the right one. So yeah, we see we see the uh, we see the Swain doing some damage. Killian, who is Killian? Oh God. Killian oh, that is Swain. Swain. Yep, Killian, 35, 35k damage again. Yeah. This guy knows how to play the champion. He knows what to do. And it wasn't like last game where he, you know, he just went nuts. This game, 
he he struggled for it a little bit, but then ended up getting a pretty decent lead and doing a lot of damage like for he sure. likes to do. And this poor Draven, you know, he went a little too hard early game. They threw some of the advantages they had, and you saw that he went against a team that had so many knockups, so much disruption, and the Renata Glass alts, they want you to walk into them. And it would have been great if they had the early advantage so that this Draven could just hard carry while Mordekaiser wrecked havoc on the top lane, maybe pulling that Orn away or pulling the Yasuo away. Someone who couldn't keep these engages going on because that was knockup team. There's a better front to back 5v5 team fight on the side of Obsidian. Absolutely. And we saw that evidently um, for most of the game. And even with the stats, I mean, you see comparable, uh, you know, around 22K, 24.4K on the side of UMass. They, you know, they did something there, but it was not enough in mm -hmm. the team fights. Um, the Draven, like you said, I mean, it's tough. He's below nearly everyone on DA Obsidian and damage, which yeah. is not what you want to see from a Draven. And those damage stats are not telling the full story. This Draven was smurfing early game. He, he was, was doing some work. He was doing some work in the lane. It's tough to translate that as that champion into something substantial for the team as you go into that later, you know, later part of the game. But he he definitely did his best there. And I love to see the pick. Please pick it more often. Or, you know, things like it where it's kind of risky, not just some, you know, boring stuff like Orm. Yeah. And uh, speaking of top lane, you know, this Mordekaiser 21.9k damage, he was doing his own. He did his job, and he did it as well as he could. But again, it was once that Baron was taken by the Obsidian, that was all of Mordekaiser's power out the window. He is a split push champion. That's what he, it's where he excels. And uh, they just they couldn't really make that work. Right now, we're trying to load up an interview, but uh, let's see what we can get that going. JDK, I know you're out there. I know you want to talk to us so bad. True. Um, come on in, dude. You know, set it up. Be our buddy, dude. Is that you, Jay? There he is. Hey. A familiar Let's face. Go. A familiar face. I mean, you guys are feeling good after that. Game one. Tell me about game one. How are you guys feeling from game one? I mean, Jesus You guys Christ. can hear me this time, right? Oh, yeah. I hear you. All right. All right perfect. Uh, I mean, first off, Killian's just a giga smurf. Uh, Ban Swain is my only recommendation. Seriously. Um, Just straight up, just 1v9 in those games. It felt pretty easy to ride with Coattail and just get nice from 2 0. I mean, I didn't say that, but again credits to where it's due your coach you know a couple weeks ago you're saying your coach was really helping you guys level up and you can see that early game mid game late game you guys are playing your wing cons your coach must be doing a lot of work right yeah papa could is doing a really good job <laughs> um yeah i mean just like giving us like clear like ways to want to win the game and then just being able to follow up and slowly implement it's like what we want to use as a game plan um yeah it's just been like pretty fun especially the turn around the last half of the season. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, I love to see the improvements over the, over the split from you guys. Um, seriously, this week and two weeks ago where you guys had that crazy, you know, we're defending our Nexus. Just, just kidding. You're defending your Nexus. Just kidding. We won. Seeing, you know, from that to this, we're a complete domination game one into this uh, game two where you guys, you know, maintain the momentum there. Um, very impressive, and I'm excited to see what you guys, you know, what you guys can try against uh, vegan chickens. Those those guys are crazy too, but I'm sure that you guys are going to prepare, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see the showing for it. Oh, trust me, we're trying to we're ready to take down every name here. Nice. All right, and so you must have something cooking for vegan chickens, huh? You're going to roast them? Uh, roast them, bake them, whatever they fucking <laughs> need. I mean, like honestly, we're ready to eat them up. Just in time for Thanksgiving. Let's go. Oh, yeah, perfect on the time. Table. Very nice. There's a next victim there. Awesome. Okay, JDK. You know we always like talking to you, man. Thanks for always, uh, you know, willing be willing to uh, talk with us. Um, have a good night, man. Congrats on the wins. Right. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right, see ya. Bada bang. That's the main man, JDK. He's the man. This split, he is the dude. Um, yes, sir. And I like what he said. You know, he's a mid laner, but he's willing to take the back seat, letting the ADC bot laner, and I guess, I guess in this case, the APC take the lead and really bring them that win that swain was smurfing for real he was doing some serious work and that's what you gotta do sometimes you know you're on a team it's not all about you know the role or who's who um 
if someone's going off, you you know you help them go off. You, like he said, ride the coattails of whoever is doing that. Lift them up, help them out, do the best that you can to make sure that they are going to, um, you know, fulfill that that lead that they have. Um, For sure. And right now, uh, game three versus HSGB and baked roasted chicken. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> hey, <it's all> <laughs> okay, my my mind is going someplace. Uh, roasted baked roasted grilled also chickens. Uh, one one right now. I'm waiting to see who's gonna face Raw Reapers in the semis. Right. Yeah, next that's week. next week. Well, not next week. The week after, because of course we won't True. be here. Or is that? Are they? They're not playing next week. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the week after next week. Um, of course Thanksgiving. So that will be interesting to see who you know who's up against Raw Reapers. But for that same that same semifinals, we will have Da Obsidian versus Vegan Chickens, like we said. That'll be one round of the semifinals, and then, um, yeah, we will see what ends up happening with this other series here, HSGB versus Baked Roasted Grilled. Um, Absolutely. Do we have an update or no? no. All right. We don't know who won yet, so. It's one-to-one, -one, which is cool. They're still playing. They're still playing right now. They're playing the third match. Yeah, third match. Ooh, a little crazy. Spicy. A little crazy, so. Um, yeah. And really, we're seeing the difference in how well prepared these teams were i just feel like umass was kind of i mean like like fry master said in the interview it was kind of winging it but i mean you saw that and you saw that play out where you yeah you may be winging it it's fun but you're gonna lose to the preparation you're gonna lose to the draft diff especially in game one game two much better draft but the win cons weren't there they weren't playing to the team's identity and so they suffered for it they lost. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. UMass, you know, guys, first split we've had you. Um, please come back. It's super cool to have a local school in the split. Yep. Um, something like that has not really happened before for the SLS. Um, I would say that that's a pretty considerable milestone. Kind of gets the name out there a little bit. Um, hopefully, you guys, you know, tell all your little, you know, league buddies all about us on campus. You're saying, oh, my God, SLS, I love it. I played last week. Oh, my God, what the – what the fuck it was the best time i've ever had holy shit these guys are the best um if not that's okay but you know what we were very happy to have you in the split very cool to have you guys um so yeah next week like i said quick recap before we wrap this up here um next week we will not be here thanksgiving turkey and shit you know stuff thing and stuff like that anyway um week after that da obsidian versus vegan chickens and whoever wins hsgb versus baked roasted grilled will face raw reapers in the second round of the semifinal so we'll see what happens there it'll be hype it's gonna be there be there to see it yeah you really should because it's gonna be hype you know see what da obsidian has to pull out see what their coach can do you know he's been putting in work they've been doing some shit absolutely they might be taking some shit i oh, don't know yeah. they might be supplementing somehow <laughs> um i'm not gonna say too much about that but Guys, um, like I said, not next week, but the week after that, be back here, just like we will be. Um, and yeah, that's the, that's the quarterfinals for tonight. As far as uh, UMass versus DA Obsidian goes, DA Obsidian 2 owed. Quick sweep for them. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us tonight. Uh, bye. Peace out. Josh, keep it real as always. Oh, thank my you. man. And peace See out, ya. everyone. Have a good night. See ya.